Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com for all your vacation needs. Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com Have her book your magical vacation today. Welcome one and all to another episode of WDW After Dark. We are so glad that you decided to stop and give us a watch or give us a listen as we bring to you the weekly dose of Disney headlines, Star Wars, Marvel, Disney food, Disney travel, and a whole lot of more so glad to be with you guys as you're watching the show and listening to the show also joining me as well the wonderful very talented man of many voices mr eric allen from the sorcom review and mighty marvel geeks mr eric how are you doing sir how do ah we are getting close into halloween aren't we, we? are yes this is the and, last and it's appropriate isn't it that me and you woody and the beef do oh, a yes. show close to Halloween and everything. Yeah, I mean, this this is pretty good. Dude we haven't done bros, it in a while. <laughs> nothing but dude bros. Dude so cool. bros on After Dark. Wow, another soundbite we need to uh, capture and throw on the soundboard. Just in <laughs> Thank case. you, Bill Murray, for being such an inspiration. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, but uh, thanks for uh, doing the show with me this time around. It's my pleasure, it. man. I, I was going to do the show by myself last week, but I decided, no, we'll get, we'll get zero views out of this. Nobody will listen to it. And I said, you know, we'll just, uh, I'll wait until everybody else is here or just me and you or whatever. So there you go. Yeah. But anyway, um, we got a couple things we're going to cover this time around during the show. But first, we want to mention our sponsors. And we start that off with Magical Journeys Travel. Kristen is going to help you when it comes to your vacation needs, when it comes to Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, adventures by Disney Cruise Lines like, I don't know, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, a whole lot more. You can check all of those out. Just head over to the sponsors page at WDW After Dark for Magical Journeys Vacations. Also, Eric mentioned we're like what six days away, or yes, it's a four week, days, five days away from Halloween. Yes, yeah. So might as well do it now. I'm sure they can do expedited shipping for you. Head over to Halloween.com, one of our sponsors, and uh, just get something. At this point, <laughs> you can't be too picky and choosy. Uh, when you want to choose something for Halloween, because it's literally six days away as of today, the 25th. Uh, so please head over to Halloween.com and check out all of the fantastic costumes that they have there. Also, Amazon.com is a big one for us because you can do all kinds of shopping. It doesn't just have to be electronics. It doesn't just have to be a drone or a camera. It can just be the things that you need around the house. Detergent, soap. Uh, shampoo, all kinds of different things you can find on Amazon, and you can find a link directly to that site via www.afterdark.com, and we would appreciate it if you would check that 
out. And as we will talk about later on in the show, you've got some fantastic movies coming up this holiday season. You've got Doctor Strange coming in just a short amount of time. You've also got Rogue One, a Star Wars story coming in less than two months. So where do you go to get your tickets, Mr. Eric Allen? Where do they, what do they need to do? Well, go to WDWAfterDark.com. Obviously. Obviously, because Fandango is also another link that you can click on to get those movie tickets. You know these movies are going to be sold out day one. Might as well get your tickets right now. Don't wait. Be guaranteed a seat. And all you have to do is visit www.afterdark.com to get to all of those links. And the reason we tell you that is simply because it adds an extra penny into our pocketbooks so that we can help pay for different things. Equipment. It doesn't cost system. you a thing to do Not this. Not a thing. Not a thing. Just clicking on it gives us a penny. The penny always helps. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter penny, once. Penny later. saved is a penny earned. <laughs> Exactly. But 149 exactly. of them is what you need to get a Coke out of the vending machine. <laughs> so true. That's so true. You're going to need a lot of them in case you decide to use that. But please visit our sponsors over at www.afterdark.com and let's get on with the rest of the show. We've got your headlines. WW After Dark presents Disney Headline. So now it's time to get into our headlines portion of the show where we cover a lot of great things when it comes to the Disney Company, the Disney Parks, Marvel, Star Wars, travel, food, and a whole bunch of other things. But this time around, it's just me and Eric, so we're, we don't like to talk about food. We like to eat the food, so we're going to leave that to Kristen. Uh, but we are going to cover some fantastic Marvel stuff. We are going to talk a little Star Wars, and of course, we are also going to talk some Disney Park news. But real quick, Eric, I know you're part of the SORCOM review, or yes. actually you are the SORCOM review on Sorcerer Radio every single week on Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. Yes. Eastern time. But you're also part of Marty, uh, Marty, Mighty. I'm having real troubles this evening. <laughs> Mighty Marvel Geeks, very popular podcast when it comes to the world of Marvel. What do you guys have coming up on that? Well, we uh, will be recapping this week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And mm -hmm. we will be talking about, uh, of course, Doctor Strange coming up in just a few days. Uh, what the critics are saying, what the, uh, what the supposed end credits are, are going to be, and how he fits into the larger Marvel U Cinematic Universe, because it has been confirmed. He is going to be a major player. I mean, this is not like an Ant-Man. Well, I can't even yeah, say Ant-Man yeah. being a bit part because Ant-Man did figure pretty prominently in Civil War. True. But he is, uh, in the comics, he is a major figure. He is a member of what is called the Illuminati, which is pretty much the most powerful uh, characters in the, on Earth, the Marvel right. Universe. You've got like Reed right. Richards. You've got... Uh, Tony Stark, you've got Black Panther, Doctor Strange. So, yeah, there's going to be that. And uh, we'll also have our picks of the week for New Comic Book Day, which occurs every Wednesday. And we each, me, Mike, and Kylan, we take turns. We have our picks that we like to pick in a series, like, say, if we like a particular writer. Like, uh, I like the Thor uh, writer Jason Aaron, who incidentally is also from Alabama. Uh, he's the one that uh, it was his idea to have Dr. Jane Foster sub in as Thor. Right. Uh, he's also he's also done a stint on Dr. Strange, and he's also been the writer for the Star Wars title from Marvel. Awesome. Wow. That's good stuff. That is really now. They can listen to Mighty Marvel Geeks on Sorcerer Radio Saturday mm -hmm. nights every single week, but where else can they actually find it and download it? That's what I want to You know. can download it. Uh, you can listen to it uh, by going to webegeeks.net. It's one of the podcasts that's hosted over there. The WDW Tiki Room podcast, which Chris and Al John host, is on there as well. But uh, you can also subscribe right. to it via iTunes and get a new one every week when it comes out. 
So lots of different ways. Lots there of different are ways. options. Yeah, so you need to check out Mighty Marvel Geeks, whether it be on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, go to the website, listen on Sorcerer Radio Saturday nights over at srsounds.com. And also, don't forget, you've got to listen to the SORCOM review Tuesday mornings, 8 a.m. Eastern Time over on Sorcerer Radio. So we want to make sure to uh, cover all of that. Also, the Dining at Disney podcast as well uh, with Kristen, where she reviews a lot of food, a lot of restaurants. I mean, if you're not hungry at the beginning of that podcast, you're going to be hungry at the end of the podcast. So might as well have some food with you while you listen to that. That's one why we that one. don't talk food on here, because we start talking yeah. food, we're going to get hungry. Yeah, and, and we're not going to get anything productive done in this show whatsoever. No, no, no. So, yeah. But, that's but Jeff, let's not be remiss. Yeah. Where can people find you? Because you are, you are actually one of the reasons that I got into Sorcerer Radio in the first place. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm, that was I've a told long you this time before. Ago. That was yeah. a long time ago. You were that part of the old ago. Character Breakfast podcast, but I also listened to you on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern for DW60, which is, uh, which is where you're still at, right? I am still there. Uh, the 10th year of DW60 on Sorcerer Radio is still going on for the rest of the year. So uh, a fantastic anniversary year for that. And the news has been very, very interesting. I've been ranting a little bit here lately uh, when it comes to hurricanes and Disney food. I'm probably going to do some ranting this week. I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be about, uh, but, but I am going to mention a, a few good things. And uh, of course, you know, with, with Sorcerer Radio, lots of great music for Walt Disney World and uh, Disneyland with Disneyland Magic and uh, William Hershey, Disney Trip Tips, E-Ticket Time, WDW Tiki Room. I mean, the list goes on and on. So we appreciate your support at Sorcerer Radio. Most definitely. Most definitely. So uh, well, let's go ahead and jump into our, you know, headlines as far as the show is concerned. And when I mention this, I mention it because we're concerned about your safety. Disney is concerned about your safety because uh, a 67-year-old man with a pre-existing heart condition fell ill and passed away after riding Star Tours. Uh, the District 9 Medical Examiner's Office identified the man as Ralph Lyles of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it was caused by hypertensive cardiovascular disease with uh, other significant conditions uh, contributing, unfortunately, to his death, the death um, listed as obesity as well, from what uh, the spokesperson said. Uh, the death last month was recorded in a least list of serious ride-related injuries and Ill illnesses in major theme parks and stuff. Now, here's the thing. We can all be rest assured that this man's untimely death had nothing whatsoever to do when it comes to safety and Disney rides because Disney lets you know before you get on any type of an attraction if you have the following conditions you do not need to ride this attraction mm -hmm. period the end so Disney is doing what they can to keep people from ending up in a situation like this but it, it's hard to say that the, the guy may or may not have known that he had this type of disease in the first place. It was just there. He may not have known about it. And Star Tours has a tendency to kind of jar you around a little bit, uh, maybe a little motion sickness, and is rather intense at times. At times. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't fault Disney for this. When it came to the deaths involving Mission Space over at Epcot, it's a little more intense. You know, that uh, centrifuge type of attraction that it is spinning you at such a rate uh, that you feel extra G-forces on your body, uh, that's a little more serious. But this attraction just kind of you know, shakes you around a whole bunch and you're watching, watching a screen that's in 3D and everything. Fantastic attraction. But unfortunately with this guy and his pre-existing conditions... Uh, unfortunately, passed away, and that's not something you want to hear when it comes to a Disney. No, vacation. no, the the happy the happiest place on earth. It just kind of ruins that vibe for you. But in all fairness, yeah, there have been people die on Pirates of the Caribbean. This is true. This is absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, before before anybody panics and going, oh well, they need to shut the ride down. They need to tone the ride down. Y'all chill. Yeah. 
this this is not I'm just going to say this most of your attractions at Disney even the ones that are labeled thrill rides are not as intense as what you will find at other parks I think that's the best way that I can put it I, I think that's a good way to put it yeah uh, you can yeah. you can make it thrills with drama you can make it thrills with a light and sound and interaction yeah but as for a, a, adrenaline they're not it's not that many not that many no and they're not going to be no that's the you're not going to get like what's what's a good one um well tower of terror that's about as as intense as you're going to get right Disney tries to keep all of its attractions as friendly, family friendly, and involve the family as much as possible. Up to, you know, you have to be a certain height for certain attractions. Okay, that's a given, right? Yeah. With Disney, it's just like you said; it's just not that intense. It's just not that intense. So. I, I hate the fact that that happened. I really do. That just, it's like that situation yeah, with the, the parents and the kid and the, kid and the, and the alligator, you know, a yes, tragedy, you know, happens at the happiest place on earth. You don't expect that. You just don't expect it. And we have talked about this before about the, uh, the sense of letting your guard down while you're in the Disney bubble. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it's a magical place. Everything's happy there. Uh, everybody's nice. Everybody's fun. But it's still the real world. And the real world can intrude in the worst way possible. It can. Yeah. I agree. So that's just an un that's a tragic reminder that you know, here you leave the modern world and enter the worlds of fantasy, reality, whatever, but you're still there. Yeah, you are. And I think it's safe to say that Disney will always be sure, in my eyes, to keep guests' safety as really, I would say, their number one priority when they're in the parks. Yeah, they want people to be safe on their vacations. Mm -hmm. That's people. This is why you're paying all that money to go to Walt Disney World. Your safety is included in it, and that kind of segues us into the next news story from Walt Disney World. And this is a doozy. This goes back to the earlier days of Walt Disney World, where people just did stupid things. Yes, absolutely stupid things, like trying to bring stuff you're not supposed to. To Walt Disney World. And over at Epcot on Monday, according to reports, a Louisiana man attempted to bring a loaded firearm, a gun, into Epcot. In now, case you didn't weather, know what a loaded firearm was. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was found at the security checkpoint at the entrance to the park uh, prior to Prior to the metal detectors, the man walked up. He disclosed that he had a gun on him prior to being screened. Just walked up to a cast member and said, hey, guess what? I've got a gun. And it was a loaded Smith & Wesson bodyguard 380 automatic. Mm -hmm. This is no just little bitty James Bond handgun here. Okay. No. Not at all. Well, it's not a full automatic. It's semi-automatic. Yeah. And but, it was in a yeah. case underneath his jacket tied around him. Michael Langston of Abita Springs, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that he had no plans to declare his weapon to authorities prior to being chosen for screening and planned to bring the loaded weapon into the park if he wasn't stopped. He was going to bring it in. He was arrested as he was in possession of a concealed firearm with no permit. I think that's what you need to make very clear to people. 
because I've seen this story making the rounds through Facebook groups. And of course you get the, 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 the people who are panicked and they say, well, he was arrested for bringing a gun in. No, no, he was not arrested for bringing in a gun. He was arrested for having a concealed weapon without a permit. Now, we'll get into the in, into the policies during our discussion segment but yeah at, at the same time you just got to think dude what were you thinking why why i i said this last week or week before last during dw60 and i used these specific words Help me, help me understand why it is you want to bring a loaded weapon into Walt, into any establishment like a theme park. I don't care if it's Walt Disney World. I don't care if it's Six Flags. I don't care if it's Cedar Point. I don't care if it's Bush Gardens. I don't, I don't even care if it's Universal. I don't. I don't understand why people want to do something like that. This man had every intention of going in there and I think doing something extremely tragic. He wasn't right up here, Eric. He wasn't right. I just see, I don't. All right. Can't be. He can't be. Okay. I don't think he intended to do something malicious. Okay. Because if he did, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have declared it he'd have pulled it out and started shooting you follow me i'm i, I follow it, you it, i'm 50 50 on that i'm 50 50. i'm the type i don't I, I try not to attribute something to malice when stupidity will work better or yeah. just as well yeah so this is one of the things i'm just attributing to stupidity Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. That's he's an, because he's an idiot. Yeah. It could be. Now, here's the thing. Why are you carrying around a concealed weapon when you don't have a permit? Uh-huh. All right. Second of all, you're going into a place where you basically have the population of a medium sized city what really what do you have to be thinking in order to think well this is a good idea see i don't think yeah. he was <laughs> this sounds to me like he's a guy who's going well, you know, I carry this shit around with me all the time anyway. I carry it to Walmart and the food world and, <laughs> and, and to the gas station. I even carry it to church. I put, it into, it put a little bullet in the offering plate every time. It says, praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. So I figured there ain't nothing wrong with taking it to Disney World. It's just a thing. Oh, yes, well, he, he is from Louisiana. I mean, we I guess we can I, throw that back out there again. <laughs> I am I am stretching this to a facetious level, but at the very uh, at the very core of it, I think there is a bit of I'm used to doing it, so I don't sure. think yeah. about it. Like I carry a Winchester with me pretty much every day. Yeah. It's this you see this? This it's a Winchester knife. I got it. I can't remember where I got it. I think I got it for Christmas one year. But I carry this in my pocket everywhere I go. If you see me one, in the truck, I got with, one. with a with a pair of pants or shorts on that has a pocket, chances are this is in it. Yeah. Do I use it as a weapon? No. I use it as a tool. I use it to cut, you know, to cut string, to cut paper, to cut cards, to to uh, you know, to pry staples loose just for whatever. Do you do you whittle wood with it? Um, not that often, no. Okay, just checking. I want to make sure. But I'm, I'm tapping into your creative side. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried whittling. I I try carving. It's it's not for me. It, it requires too much patience. Oh, but yeah. 
to me, carrying this knife is is pretty much automatic. Yeah, sure. It's something that's just you know, just scoop up, put it in your pocket. Now, I don't think carrying a gun should ever feel automatic. It's not like, you know, okay, I've got my wallet. Okay, I've got my keys. Yeah. Okay, I've got my cell phone. Your gun shouldn't be included in that list of things that you need as you walk out the door. Well. Unless you're that scared for your life, in my opinion. I, 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 got, I got nothing against people who want to conceal carry. Nope, no problem with if it. You, no problem at all. If you go through the training, you get your certification, you get your permit. Yeah, yeah. You have every right to carry it. You do. But it should never be... It, it should never be a trivial thing to carry it. Yeah. You should never take it for granted. Does it seem to you like this guy wanted to be caught? Because he just walks right up to, you know, a cast member says, hey, guess what? I've got a gun. Well. Before you even get to security, before you're even screened. If I'm reading the story correctly. If, I, if my interpretation of the story is, is accurate, he was yeah. going to go through the no bag line mm -hmm. right. and it was, and the ca security cast member just randomly chose him. It's like, okay, sir, I, you know, we're going to choose you to go through the metal detector. Yeah. It was at that point that he said, oh, well, by the way, I'm packing. Because so had he not had he not been randomly chosen to go through the metal detector, yeah, he'd have walked right in. He'd have been on he'd been on spaceship Earth. He wanted. To, I'm not saying he's going to pull it out and take a pot shot at the Phoenicians, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shoot you for saying it wrong. Yeah. Uh, the deputy wrote in the arrest report, report that Langston had no plans to declare his weapon to authorities prior to being chosen for screening and planned to bring the loaded weapon into the park if he wasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. hmm. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't know. Uh, we'll go over, like Eric yeah. said earlier, uh, the do's and the don'ts of what to bring and what not to bring to, uh, <laughs> to uh, Walt Disney World for vacation and when you go into the parks. All right. We're going to move on. Uh, I didn't mention this to you, Eric. I totally forgot. But uh, Disney uh -oh. is kind of shaping, shaking up things when it comes to the Christmas Day Parade this year. I don't know if you've heard about this. Uh, but this uh, they kind of threw a curveball to me on this one. You know, uh, what's the, I, I, I've heard something very, very vague that the schedule had come out, but I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't heard the, the details on it. So you got the change-up pitch. You didn't get the full curveball on this. Okay. No, I didn't. So it's going to be a series of special airings throughout November and December this year. Filming is going to take place November 9th through the 13th at all four Walt Disney World theme parks. The parade itself is going to be filmed exclusively out in California at Disneyland with Disney World hosting stage show performances. I guess they're going to be able to view the filming, which will take place during regular park hours. There's going to be no tickets available. It's first come, first serve to get in these spots if you want to. But you need to look for the specials to air on both ABC and Disney Channel throughout November and December. I kind of like the idea of this, to be honest with you. It's not a one-and-done thing like it's been in the past. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Honestly, Jeff, I don't watch that anymore. Wait, 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 you don't watch the Disney Parks Christmas Day Parade anymore? I what? don't. I what? don't. And I'll tell you the why. Okay. Because it's no longer about the parade. Mm. It's kind of like when they were, when, when they live streamed, quote unquote, live streamed, the Main Street Electrical Parade. <laughs> if I want to watch a parade, now I am prefacing this. You're going to bring this up to Disney a lot, aren't you? <laughs> They're so-called live streams. I am going to preface this by saying, 
I am not the biggest parade person out there. Neither am I. No. Okay. I love parades, but not that much. If I'm watch, if I want to watch a parade, though, I want to watch the parade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to watch thirty seconds of a parade out of forty-five minutes. Huh. Show me the freaking parade. Don't show me stage show after stage show after stage show after stage show. That's not a parade, folks. True. That's a comedy variety show that's lured you in with the hook of a parade and then done the bait and switch. Careful, folks. He's on a roll. Don't give me a stage show. If I want a stage show, I'll go to a stage show. I'm tuning in to watch a parade. Give me floats. Give me bands. Give me characters walking around and waving at people. Somebody get Eric a soapbox. By God, bring back the parades. <laughs> Dang blessed kids. Or at least just bring back a nighttime for parade for crying out loud. Because <laughs> they haven't even done that yet. They haven't told us anything. Here's why I like it. Okay, because I always watch the Disney Parks Christmas Day Parade. Yeah. I, I tend not to miss it, okay? Okay. But Christmas morning gets a little bit frantic for a lot of families, and they're in the process of, all right, let's 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 reference out one of our favorite Christmas movies, A Christmas Story. That's uh, what's on my TV on Christmas mornings. Yeah. Kids are up at the break of dawn. They go downstairs. They see what's going on, and it's a frantic madhouse for the next two hours of everybody opening gifts. The last thing that you're doing is watching TV. You're just not doing it. And so I think Disney may have said to themselves, why don't we show it like five or six times between November and December? Then everybody gets to watch as many times as they want to watch. Hey, this is great. What wonderful exposure we're going to get. I think that's what they were thinking. And I think it's a good idea. Why didn't they think of this 10 years ago? Why? I don't know. But they're going to we'll do it now. See, we'll see how it pans out. We'll see yeah, we how will. it works. We'll see how it pans out. And if it's going to come on five or six times, then I guess I'm going to have to watch it five or six times. And throw it on the DVR so I can watch it a little more when it's not playing. <laughs> I love watching it. I love it. I can't help I miss it. having a DVR, I'm telling you. Yeah. So that's going on in case you're interested. And what's happening with the uh, Disney Parks Christmas Day Parade. All right, one more thing that I've got to talk about, Disney merchandise, and then we're going to head over to Eric's side of the house for Star Wars and Marvel and stuff like that. So I love merchandise. I love shopping. I love going into the stores, and I like touching things. I like to shop with my hands. I have to touch. You see this? I, I, I have to touch stuff. I can't help it. I'm like my mother. She walks into an antique store, and she touches everything. And so I'm the same way. When I walk into the Emporium, I've touched everything. So if you bought something there, I touched it. I'm just kidding. It's not the truth. But I do like shopping with my hands. Okay. So when Disney comes out with brand new merchandise, I get excited because I love this stuff, but I don't buy it all. I had you guys worried for a second. Okay. So I just want to finger the material, the merchandise. <laughs> That's so wrong to say it like that. <laughs> okay. So, you don't want to know uh, where my mind was going. I'm just saying. <laughs> Disney has sh shared a little bit of a preview with upcoming Star Wars-themed products coming to the parks this fall and this December. One of the coolest items out of everything they have shown, Eric, and, and you're probably going to agree with me, is the Imperial Comlink Bluetooth communicator that you can buy. It's a Comlink. It's a standard held, held, handheld communication device used by the Empire. If you recall, if you've seen Star Wars A New Hope, Episode 4, Luke is in the trash compactor. He's trying to talk to C-3PO to figure out, hey, can you get this thing from stop crushing us to death and everything else? Luke's holding one. C-3PO is holding one. You can now get it for yourself. You can connect it to your phone. You can take phone calls with it. You can listen to music with it. I don't know how much it costs, but I want it. <laughs> Not a clue how much it costs, but I want it. 
It's the coolest thing ever. This this is the kind of thing where you just pick it up just so you can call your best friend and go, shut down all garbage measures on the detention level. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That was really good, bud. <laughs> He's here all week, folks. He's here all week. Try the veal. So, <laughs> seriously cool. And it comes yes. with a belt clip, too. You can even put it on a belt clip. <laughs> yes. Does okay. that not just top it off? It's got that, its own charger, and it comes with a belt clip. Are you kidding me? I was on the fence until you mentioned belt clip, and then it's kind of like, that, that, yes, that's I must me. have it. Must have it. Yeah. That way, when I walk around, everybody will see that I have an Imperial communicator on my belt, and they'll go, ooh, by the way, what is that? And now I get to tell you. Well, that's that too. Is. Especially yeah. if you're doing like going to conventions and cosplaying as a Jedi or, or whatever. And, you know, you just walking along, all of a sudden, a phone's coming in. You just go, transport, this is solo. You're just going to have to go on with you. I'll get her out on the Falcon. See? <laughs> like I said, that's the coolest you, thing. You, yes. You, think of, you yes. Think, you think of stuff like that and you're like, oh, this is cool. I got to have one. I have to have one. And there was other stuff, trust me, that uh, Disney talked about as well. But that was the coolest one I saw. Uh, also, uh, some new handbags inspired by Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, look for those over at the Star Trader at Disneyland Park in California or Legends of Hollywood at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Fans of the Star Wars... Star Wars. <laughs> what is my problem? Fans of the Star Wars droid factory at Disney Parks will find two new carded astromech droid action figures this fall. The R2BOO or the R2H16 will be available for you to buy. Speaking of droids, you want to keep warm this fall and winter, then you need to pick up the new fall blankets inspired by BB-8 and R2-D2. And finally, if you're a fan of Star Tours, you love the Star Speeder 1000. Yes. It's a place set that they've had before. They had before. They first introduced it back in 2011. It is back. It's been updated with interchangeable destination discs featuring Jakku from Star Wars The Force Awakens. So when you place the card in the front screen of the toy vehicle, you're going to hear dialogue from Star Tours the Adventures yes. Continue Attraction yes. when you do it. Yes. Really cool. I like the playset. My son has really cool. this. Uh, we got it for him during one of our trips, and he absolutely loves it. And just just for fun, I, I sat down uh, with it, and I was actually going to put together a, a review for uh, for Jedi Mouseketeer on it, but it never really happened. But I took all these pictures, including just, just one where I was just having fun. I put Han Solo in the pilot seat, and I gave him an Indiana Jones whip and fedora. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, well, he's going incognito. Go home, Han. You're drunk. That's good. I like that. <laughs> but I, I, it surprised me just how nice that particular playset was. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree with you. Do I have a picture of it? Uh, let me let me look and see. I think I have a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't. Oh, but also, do you remember the little droid on the Death Star when Han and droid. Luke are taking the mouse droid? Yeah. Yeah. That's the last item I'm going to tell you about. You can get the little mouse droid. The one Chewbacca yells at, it runs away screaming like a droid does. It's a remote-controlled droid that you can use. And it makes the sound apparently as well. Honestly, I'm surprised that hasn't been introduced before. Yeah, I am surprised too. I am. Yeah. All really good stuff. Give me a little, take a look at the picture here. There's the, yeah. uh, no, right here. I the like the controller. Yeah, the controller's I I, cool. I think what I like the best about that is the controller. Yeah, I do like that. And I'll show you a picture of the communicator real quick, uh, along with the uh, droid blankets. Love my visual aids here. These are great. <laughs> uh, there's, there's the communicator on the bottom there. Yeah. Fantastic. 
and then the towels right there as well. Yeah. So really good stuff. So check out that merchandise. Uh, that stuff started coming out October the 17th, and as the fall and winter progress into December this year, uh, other things are going to come out as well on that list. So be sure to check all of the stores out there for the latest Star Wars merchandise as we get closer and closer to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And that is where we transition over to Mr. Eric Allen, who is going to give us some Star Wars and Marvel news. Eric? Well, the big thing that is coming up, of course, is Rogue One that comes out in December. And I'm looking forward to it because, well, it's not about Jedi. It's not a prequel. It's not a sequel. It's nope. an in between nope. That's right. It is the story of how the Rebellion got its hands on the Death Star plants. Wait a second. Back up, rewind. You called it a what? I called it an in between quill. In between quill. In between quill. Is that, is that a new word? Sure. Why not? Hashtag that, please, if you're listening to the show. Hashtag that word. In between quill. I mean, you okay. think about it. You've got the original trilogy. Which is, you know, episodes four, five, and six. You've got the right. prequel trilogy, which means the ones that come before one, two, three. Now you right. have the sequel trilogy, seven, eight, and nine. Right. What else do you call it? Uh, it's not part of the, it, it takes place after the prequels, before the originals. It's your word, man. It's your word. <laughs> so that's In what it the is. Cool. In the twinkle. Cool. <laughs> That's phenomenal. I love it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so that is the thing. And let's see. Uh, let me pull that up here because it. I think that a lot of people are looking forward to it uh, because actually it makes the – and we, Al John and I discussed this on, on earlier After Dark where the Empire actually looks fearsome. In this, I agree. Yeah, in the uh, in the original Star Wars movie, they looked they were fearsome. Mm -hmm. They were ruthless. They were mm -hmm. uh, people that you should be scared of, mm -hmm. right? Okay. In Empire Strikes Back, you know they they were they were kind of. But not sure. quite as scary as they were in Star Wars. I agree. Return of the Jedi, they got beaten up by teddy bears wearing leather. <laughs> oh, and Miley granted, looked like one of those. My dog looks like it. <laughs> now, <laughs> granted, a they look and act like Chuck Norris went into a Build-A-Bear, but still, <laughs> they were they were essentially teddy bears with sticks and spears and rocks. Sure. Yeah. So at that point, it was just, it, you kind of lost the feeling of the empire being something you should fear. Yeah. You kind of do in a way. Yeah. I agree. In this though. I agree. In this though, the empire is back. Has Disney shown the love on Rogue One like they did Episode 8? Uh, I'm sorry, Episode 7? Um, because I'm not feeling I'm not feeling the huge anticipation for this movie. For some I think reason. among it's the fans, among the fans, it's there. Yeah. I don't think that Disney... And when we say Disney, we mean Lucasfilm. Right. Lucasfilm, I don't think, has been pushing the advertising and the hype to the same degree. But in all fairness, episode seven was it was like a tent pole event. Oh, was it, it was, ever? Yes. Was it ever? Yeah. I mean, it was the first in a trilogy, first in a new trilogy. Yeah. The episode seven hype kind of reminded me of the episode one hype. Mm -hmm. So 
it does not surprise me and it does not bother me that Rogue One is not quite getting the same amount of hype and they're not selling it as hard. Does that make sense? That does make sense to me. And that, and that's, that explains as to why, you know, the, the, it, I consider it a soft release when it came to the, uh, boys and girls toys at the stores. It wasn't this huge thing like you had for the force awakens still very popular and people were there, you know, mm-hmm. early to get the stuff, but I just didn't feel the draw like you did with, you know, the force awakens with this thing. Yeah. And they waited so long in between trailers, even without little snippets or extra sneak peeks or you just didn't get it for some reason. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand why, because th- this is where Lucasfilm is branching out, because we've already got Rogue One. We already know there's going to be a Han Solo movie, a young Han Solo movie, yes. and other things on the horizon as well. So I would think that Lucasfilm would want to push, hey, guess what? We're doing something different with new characters, new everything. Well, one character is not new, Vader. Yeah, no, no, no. But you know, that's okay. But still, but still, it's the return of Vader on the big screen, and di- di- Lucasfilm is just kind of going, "Yeah, check it out." I think because they know that fans are excited for it. They don't necessarily. This is not a fan. This is not a movie for the casual fan. No. This is a movie for the the hardcore fans. And so I think to some degree, Lucasfilm knows they don't have to. It's for those fans who want to know when she says in episode four. Many Bothans died. That wasn't episode four, dude. I thought it was episode four. No. That's episode six, Return of the Jedi. Was it? Yes. Oh, it was I'm Return, sorry. It was Return of the Jedi who... Um, I'm a crappy, crappy Star Wars fan. I'm terrible. We know that Leia got hold of the plans for the first Death Star Mm -hmm. uh, via transmission. The plans were beamed aboard her ship by rebel spies. That's right. That's right. I still want to know what a Bothan is. I still don't know what that is. It's an alien race. It's kind of like a... uh, It looks kind of like a camel... Uh, if uh, if humans were evolved from camels, a <laughs> camel, <laughs> uh, but no humps. But this chick in Rogue One looks just like the one from Return of the Jedi. Looks just like her. Well, yes, that's because she's supposed to be the same one. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't need to see this movie now because I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Well, good enough. No, you go see this movie so you learn what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> so I'm more educated in the world of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> Get you yeah. some Star Wars education is what you need right there. <laughs> but uh, that's right. that's the big the big story coming up for Star Wars now. As yeah. far as Marvel goes, uh, of course yeah. you've got Doctor Strange coming out. Strange and I'm, man. I'm guessing that you have seen, you have seen the trailer. I've seen. Okay. This Pretty looks cool to stuff. be. It is nothing like any Marvel movie you've seen yet. It's got a, It's got one part Matrix, one part Inception, one part Sherlock Holmes. Seems that way. Yeah. And. Uh, like I said earlier in the show, this, this guy is going to be a, an integral part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. The Avengers. Yes, the Avengers. And you know, with the Infinity War, there's question as to whether or not his cloak of levitation, the Eye of Agamotto, 
that he wears is an infinity stone. I don't know. But that now is you're coming di out. You're diving deeper than I know in the Marvel Universe. So It's his little <laughs> amulet thingy that he wears around his neck. Oh, okay. Oh. That help? Yeah, it does. You were completely lost until I said amulet thingy. Amulet thingy, and then my ears perk up because I know what a thingy is. There you go. So, See? Yeah. See, that's that why lot. I'm here. To drop a strategic thingy to help you understand. Oh, that thingy's going to be stuck in my head till I see the movie, and I'm going to go, <laughs> that's the thingy that's Eric the thing was talking you're, about. You know? You're going to be sitting there in the theater, and, and the cold may even be with you. You're just sitting there. All of a sudden, you're going to see it go, thingy! Thingy! <laughs> and then you're going to have to explain to Nicole. <sighs> oh, that's the truth. Yeah. So, Doctor yeah. Strange. Doctor Strange. And, of course, uh, Luke Cage is out on Netflix. And they're working yep. on, uh, they're working on the second season of Jessica Jones, which I have been told that, uh, actually, I haven't been told. I have seen that this entire season is going to be directed by all females, all lady directors yeah, directing I, the. Which I, I think want is Quentin pretty. Quentin Tarantino. Good. I want Quentin Tarantino to direct this. Okay, put him in a dress and a wig and see if that works. Because <laughs> I think he would make it really interesting. I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying. Uh, the Punisher, they're working on the Punisher. Uh, they yeah. are filming, I want to say, Infinity War and Black Panther in Atlanta because I saw a little news blurb saying they're look, they're trying to cast extras. So if you're in the Atlanta area, you know, hey, you want to be in movies? Mm -hmm. Here's your opportunity. But, uh, one thing that uh, is coming to the comics that I don't know if you're aware or not, Jeff, but we are getting a new Iron Man. Uh, the current Civil War II storyline that's going on, uh, you've got one faction being led by Captain Marvel, the other faction being led by Tony Stark. Right. Well, after the events of this big mega story arc, uh, Tony is going to be out of the public eye for a while. And so there will be a new Iron Man. But get this. It's not a man. It is a teenage girl by the name of Riri Williams. An African-American girl by the name of Riri Williams. Mm -hmm. Who is taking over. She is, she is a freaking genius. Mm -hmm. A robotics genius. She built her own suit of Iron Man armor from scratch. Interesting. That is that's impressive in and of itself. But yeah. she is she is taking over the mantle for a while, and she's not she's of course you can't call her Iron Man. She is going to go by the name Iron Heart, which I kind of okay. like that. That sounds pretty okay. Cool. That's cool. I can go for that's that. Cool. Yeah. But uh, you're going to see as with is the popular thing to do for number one issues. You do uh, variant covers. Yep. Well, one of the variant covers is going to feature a lady by the name of Ariel Johnson. Now that she's uh, 33 years old in Philadelphia, she is the founder and owner of Amalgam Comics and Coffee House, mm -hmm. she, which is a combination comic book shop and coffee house. And what makes this unique, aside from the combination, is that she is the very first African-American female to be a comic book store owner on the East Coast. Okay. Okay. I'm surprised that it's taken this long. Mm -hmm. But uh, her story is really good. She... Uh, she got into comics when she was about 10 or 11, when she discovered the X-Men and particular storm. Mm -hmm. And so during, when she was in college, she would, uh, you know, she'd go to the comic book store to get her weekly stash, then take the books across the street to her favorite coffee shop where she'd read them while, you know, drinking and snacking. Sure. But uh, when the coffee said the coffee shop 
was, uh, you know, had to close, she said, well, you know what? I'm going to combine these two and basically make it a safe haven for all things geekery. Sure. Uh, you know, comics, gaming, sci-fi, horror, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of that place. Sure. And I think this, I think it's a great little story. I mean, you probably won't hear about it too much unless you get the cover. But I, I think it's, I say, why not? It has potential. It has potential. Why not have a black girl be the new Iron Man? Sure. Why not? The uh, the new Thor, Jane Foster is Thor. That's not been bad. Mm -hmm. I, I have no problem with this. I think I think it's got potential to be a very good thing. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it as the stories progress in Mighty Marvel Geeks. Awesome. And oh, by the way, new trailer for Logan. I did see it. The, the last time Hugh Jackman pops the claws. Mm -hmm. And also the last time that Sir Patrick Stewart uh, pretends he can't walk. Hmm. Because this is the last time he he portrays Professor Xavier. Wow. And this has a very strong old man Logan feel to it. Mm hmm. Most definitely. Uh, which, yeah. which, of course, this is in the future where pretty much all the other mutants are gone. It's just him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this shows a much older, scarred, weary looking Wolverine. Mm hmm. And an even older, very weary-looking Professor Xavier. Yeah, I noticed that too. It, yeah. it had, um, it almost had a "No Country for Old Men" kind of feel to it, or uh, something of that genre. Where, yeah, I could, I could see where you're coming from on that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. And a Johnny Cash song going on, you know, playing throughout. Which I never would have pictured Johnny Cash <laughs> no. for a superhero movie, but this works. Yeah, it does. It does. It sets it the tone of, for the it movie. It sets a very weary kind of end of the line, mm -hmm. end of an era yeah. kind of feel to it. Yeah. But we also get a shot of the new story. Brief. And I do brief. mean brief shot but yeah this is going to be the new wolverine this is the one that is currently the wolverine in the comics uh she is a clone of wolverine it's a female clone and mm -hmm. the storyline behind that was they were trying to they being a top secret program because they're all top secret programs uh attempted to recreate the original weapon x program mm-hmm uh, so they had a blood sample of Wolverines, but it was damaged. Uh, they were unable to salvage the Y chromosome out of his DNA. Uh -huh. So they said, heck with it. Let's make a female. Mm -hmm. So we wound up <laughs> with X-23. Oh, boy. <laughs> they have and no idea what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she has very, uh, very similar powers and abilities to Wolverine. Yeah. She has claws, but she only has two claws in each hand. Where did that third claw go? Well, that went into her feet. Oh, that's peculiar. Okay, she's she's got a toe claw. Oh, interesting. Uh, I bet yeah. pedicures and manicures are a problem. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> so. That we get to see her, and I think this is where the franchise is going to go at Fox from here on out. Uh huh. Interesting. Could movie. have could have potential. It solves the who do you recast as Wolverine? Well, you don't recast Wolverine. He's dead. You bring in his clone daughter, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we got one more that we previewed recently as well. Uh, you're going to have to help me out. Old man memory. Guardians of the Galaxy yes. Volume 2. And let me just say this now. You hear original music from Volume 1, the first movie. The Uga I'm really, really, really interested to hear what's on that next mixtape and what's yes. going to be included in this movie. Because I probably one of my most favorite soundtracks ever to go along with a movie is Guardians of the Galaxy. You never would have figured the Pina Colada song no, no. Would, be, would be prominent in a superhero movie, but there it is, there and it, is. it fits. It does. So, All the original characters mm -hmm. that survived in the number one movie are pretty much there in number two. Plus some extras. Plus some extras. And uh, uh, Mantis one shot is I back. loved. I loved seeing Baby Groot, Eric. Yes. I loved seeing Baby Groot. <laughs> yes. It, it's hilarious. In the first one, you see Rocket riding around on Groot. Yeah. Well, now it's the other way around. And you, you think he's going to get big in this one? Um, I think so. Towards the end? Just something I think happens towards the end. Big? Well, I think what you're going to see is that he's going to get bigger throughout throughout the movie. Yeah. And by the end of the movie, he's back to normal. Hmm. <laughs> Just stick him in the sun and give him some miracle grow in his baby formula. You know, he's fine. There was a very, very touching moment in the sneak peek of this trailer. And I think you probably know the one I'm talking about where the words, do you need a hug? Come yes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> it is slightly an awkward moment, but a touching moment at the same time yes. where he's like, I didn't need a hug, but okay, thanks for the hug. <laughs> type situation. <laughs> The comic relief is is most definitely still there when it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, no doubt about it. Mike. Yes, it, it, that is my favorite Marvel movie so far, and that's that is. Uh, yeah, I don't want to yeah. set my sights too high to set the bar too high on that, but it's at the same time it's hard not to. Wait until summer, twenty seventeen to see this. Mm -hmm. yes, man. Oh, well, that's more than enough time to get the Guardians of the Galaxy attraction ready at Disneyland. Well, California. Yeah. And for Disney to decide whether or not they want to do one at Epcot or not. Yeah. Because we still don't know. We still don't know. Uh, I have heard that the the real hook on that agreement with universal is that they can't use the word marvel in the parks mm -hmm. if you just had guardians of the galaxy but no marvel on it that it would be it they would not be violating the letter of the agreement now violating it's the spirit of the agreement definitely it's a loophole that's what it is it's a loophole and i'm not i have not heard any any information that would confirm that yeah, yeah. so i'm taking it as a rumor mm -hmm. as a possible rumor yeah destination d is the rumored location as to the announcement of the Galaxy attraction over at Epcot in place of Ellen's Energy Adventure. So we will see. We'll see what happens. When is Destination D, Jeff? I don't have a clue. Uh. I used to have it written down in my other show notes, and those have since been discarded of, so I don't know right now. Uh, let's see here. I'll say soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, November 19th only... and 20th. Okay. Soon. 
So there you yes. go. So we're within a month. Yeah. Could be we'd be hearing something interesting. But yeah, definitely check out the latest sneak peek for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 coming out summer 2017. You've got Rogue One Star Wars story. You've got Moana. You've got Doctor Strange. You've got Moana. Lots of great Disney movies coming out. I want to see Moana. Or Lucasfilm. Yeah. I want to see it too. Yeah. I want to I smell what the rock is love cooking. To see that. Yeah, he's cooking something good in this one because I hear he is very, very good in this voiceover part that yeah. he's done. So, what else you got? Anything else? No, that's really about it for the moment. You're tapped. Okay. All right. No I problem. So, out. Those are your headlines when it comes to the Walt Disney World parks and Marvel and Star Wars. And a few other things, comic books and everything else. So as we close the show, uh, we do want to mention to everybody where we can be found when it comes to the Internet and on your mobile phone and on your laptop or your Google Glass or your VR or whatever it is you're using these days. Or your Imperial Comlink Bluetooth thingy. Exactly. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> so we're going to Eric, where can everybody find you in the universe? You can find me on Twitter at uh, Sorcom Review for Disney stuff and at Uncle Servo for all the rest. Uh, you can check out the Sorcom Review's Facebook page. Where else? Facebook.com slash Sorcom Review. You can also uh, give me a shout out in the Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone there on Facebook. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eric Allen. I muted my microphone when I wasn't supposed to. Okay, so <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> on the internet over on Twitter at DW underscore 60 and also at Jeff Davis underscore 75. A couple places you can listen to me or watch me. You can listen to me on DW60 on Sorcerer Radio Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. Eastern time for the great Walt Disney World music. And Press Row brings you the latest headlines from the Walt Disney World Resort as well. You can also check out my vlog over on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash davisjr 75 I usually use the weekends upload a nice little vlog if I have time. Kristen and Al John were not able to be with us for this show. They are on vacation, enjoying a little bit of downtime themselves. You can ch catch them on the WDW Tiki Room show every single Friday morning on Sorcerer Radio at srsounds.com at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. It is the show about all things Disney. Make sure you check out Dining at Disney and Jedi Mouseketeer and the WDW Tiki Room show in podcast form as well, as well as Mr. Eric Allen, Mighty Marvel, every single week on SR and on iTunes and a whole bunch of other places as well. Eric, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. My thank pleasure. You for joining me for another show. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you check out our sponsors one more time. Magical Journeys Vacations, Amazon, Fandango, Halloween.com. You can find them all and the links at www.afterdark.com. Make sure you check them out. We definitely appreciate you clicking on those links. you have anything else before we go, Eric? No, I think I'm good. All right. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys sticking around. Remember, you can catch this show on YouTube. You can catch it on iTunes. You can catch it at www.afterdark.com, and you can also catch it on Stitcher Radio as well. So show us the love. Give us those likes. Give us those five-star reviews. Give us comments. Hit that thumbs-up button. Subscribe. All that stuff. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys, and we love the support that you give our show. And we will be back once again with another here very, very soon. We thank you so much. Always remember, it is always better after dark.
We'll do the news. We'll do the park stuff, and then we'll talk some Marvel. We'll talk Doctor Strange. Uh, we'll talk... Oh, Hank, might as well mention Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 trailer. Sneak peek yes, came out. Yes, yes, yes. With baby Groot and uh, all the other characters. Yeah. Um, it's funny because you always saw, in the first one, you always saw Rocket hanging on Groot's shoulder. Well, now it's kind of the other way around. The reverse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we got that. We got Doctor Strange. We got Logan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the countdown is on. What, two months away? Less than two months away for Star Wars. Yes, Rogue One. We Rogue talked One. about... Uh, we talked about that with me and uh, with me and Al John. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah.